check out this free video and make sure you hit like and subscribe. We had uh, Braun Strowman, Bronson Reed, and Chad Gable. Chad Gable is alive. Yeah, he, uh, he didn't even he, he didn't really even sell like beating. He I mean he had a, he had a patch on his head, but I mean as far as the match went, it wasn't like he was limping or anything like that. No, so. They had a near disaster early as they did one of those spots. Sometimes small people will go to hit the ropes, but, like, they'll kind of miss that top rope and their head will snap or whatever. Braun missed This it. dude is so tall, and somehow he missed the top rope and almost fell through to the outside. I don't know how it happened. And then Reed did a big tope on everybody. I don't, and, I don't know about Reed doing topes. Well, he had a big dude to catch him. So Yeah, he he did. He did. Um, I mean, he did it good. I mean, I wouldn't say that, but it's like, um, that's a big guy to be doing stuff like that. I mean, um, well, kind of want to protect his knees, you know. I mean, I know that's one of the reasons why they um, they limit his tsunamis. Like, they're on TV, he'll do it all the time. But, like, at the house shows, they try not to have him do it every night, you know, even though it's his trademark move. Yeah. Well, they, uh, Judgment Day hits the ring after Strowman hit Reed with a power slam outside. They go after Braun. They brawl to the back. And then Chad goes up top, hits a moonsault, gets the pin. So Chad is going to Money in the Bank. Mm -hmm. And so afterwards, the lights go out, and they hit the piano music. The place goes nuts. Smoke is pouring into the ring. Chad is engulfed in the smoke. Yes, and he Chad... Did not, he, he did not escape, but as far as we know, he was not murdered. Well, he, like he got away, but I have to say... We know he got away because he did a promo later in the show. Chad Gable was an Olympian. Yeah. He had to cower in fear from Nikki Cross. Yes, he did. That sucked. Yeah. So he got the hell out of there, and then she... Well, well here's the deal. The, they have to sell for the group or else the group is dead. Yeah, sell for them when they beat your ass and put a bullet in your head like last week. Not yeah. when Nikki Cross is crawling across the ring. He yeah. literally took a bump. He was so scared. This Olympian. Yeah. So that was stupid. So she's got a package. She gives it to Michael Cole. It's a and VHS Michael, tape. Michael Cole, Michael Cole is opening other people's mail. It was addressed to Pat McAfee. Yeah, well, Pat's not there. Yeah, but that's not an excuse to open up somebody else's mail. Well, it's not, but we got to keep the show rolling. Yeah. A VHS tape, he says. For all you children out here, there's a VHS tape. We're going to see if we can find a VCR. A player. They had one on hand somehow. Yeah. How is, what are the odds of that? Pretty amazing. Yeah. So Chad runs backstage, and he finds Otis. And he says, guys, Alpha Academy, they're all there. He says, my life flashed before my eyes last week. All I could see was the three of them, my family. It takes a big man to admit he's wrong, and I'm sorry for everything. Families fight, but they stick together. Right, Otis? And Otis says, you know what? Families fight, but anybody who hurts one of these two, they're not family. So I'm sorry what happened to you, but I meant what I said. We're done. And he leaves, and Maxine is there, and she says, Chad, you really hurt Otis. He looked up to you like you were his big brother. And we are really happy you're okay. But I think Otis just needs more time. I'll go talk to him. So she goes in the room, and then Chad turns around, and there's Ivy in the Alpha Academy. Mm -hmm. And they say, are you all right? And he says, I'm not all right. I need help. So the story, the split is continuing. So then we had a very controversial segment, apparently, from what I've was seen it, online. Was it controversial? Cole it aired the VHS tape. Uh, I just thought it was a segment. So... Uncle Howdy is interviewing somebody, and at first we don't he, see who it is. He's interviewing himself. And he says, were you happy? Have you felt since the loss? Do you feel you've been forgotten? Do you remember who you are? So the person he ends up interviewing is, yes, himself. it's himself. It's Bo Dallas. Yeah. And Bo says, I was nobody. And Uncle Howdy says, how did you feel when your brother died? And Bo says, the most important thing in my life was taken away from me, like nothing was ever going to matter again. And Howdy says, don't you think you're exploiting your brother's legacy? And Bo said, my entire life, I just wanted to be like my brother. I looked up to him. I wanted to be him. Worked my entire career so I could be next to him. We were going to rule together. We finally made it. We were there. We had it. And it was taken away from me. 
and there is no one on this earth who feels more hurt than me from this loss. Not another person on earth feels what I feel. And he said he was not going to let everyone forget what he fought for, what he believed in. He said, they want to forget about me, forget about all of us. We made all of them remember. And Uncle Howdy says, yes, we did. Mm. And uh, I will say two things about this. Number one, this wasn't like it was live. I mean, yeah. it's one of those yeah, no. deals where if you want to believe that Bo Dallas made a video and he played both roles and edited it together, I mean, you can. It wasn't like it was live. Oh, he yeah. shot it on VHS for crying out loud. Yeah. And I will say that I've been watching Bo Dallas since uh, all the way back. And uh, this was probably his best performance I've ever seen him do. And granted, he was talking oh, yeah. about real life. It was kind of like that Jeff Jarrett promo, but a little bit different, obviously. In both, in both, actually, in both roles, as Uncle Howdy too. Yeah, he was, he was very good. So yeah, he he was. Bo Dallas was incredible in this segment. If you thought the segment sucked, I mean, you know, people have been, uh, you know, some people love it, some people hate it. But I thought that Bo did an excellent job. Yeah. Well, what I could tell, you know, like uh, the live crowd is is totally into this gimmick. Because when the thing with Chad Gable happened, people were going nuts. You know, it wasn't like they were booing and thinking it sucked. No. They were very positive towards it. I mean, they cheered a lot. It was, they were, you know, they were there. I mean, I, I expect, you know, I don't know what the rating will be. I mean, they were going against the hockey game and everything, but it probably would be good. But, um, I mean, I thought that I expected that uh, the Wyatt thing was going to draw a rating for at least another week or two. And then, you know, after that, who knows? But I thought that it was gonna. I thought for sure it was gonna help this week's rating. I mean, we'll see what happens. We had Kofi Kingston carrying Cross. This is a match they've been building up for weeks and weeks and weeks. And mm, due nothing. to the placing on the show, I mean, the crowd was dead. They didn't care. It was short. Kofi goes for his finish. Authors of Pain appear on the big screen, beating up Woods. Carrying hits his finish and pins him. Mm -hmm. That was it. Well, I mean, it was nothing yeah. segment. Well, I mean, the idea is just they're beating up Woods, and then, I don't know, Woods blames Kofi or something, yes. how it goes down. But, you know, I mean, it's it's just it's just part of advancing the story. I mean, that's all it was. And, you know, so but it's, it's, it's just like, I mean, it is what it's it advancing is. The, it's advancing the story. I know, you know, but here's my point. This is a storyline to break up the new day. Yeah. And nobody gives a shit. Well, They've been together for a decade or more. It's like it feels like it should be so much bigger. If you're actually going to finally break these two yeah. up, it feels well, like it should be so much bigger. But here it is. It's just like a well. Here's the thing: story no one cares about. Um, they weren't really. I mean, like, like they've been over in the past, but they haven't done anything with them for a long, long time. It's like if if they tried to break them up, you know, when they were on top, it would have been a lot different. You know, then there'd been a major focus and everything. Now it's like they haven't been used well. And now we're going to break them up. And it's like, fine, break them up. But, I mean, this is one of those breakups where I don't expect it will help either guy. Maybe if if Woods goes heel, it'll be something new for him. So maybe. But um, they, they I think the like simple thing is just break them up. They feud with each other. Some other people might get involved or whatever. But it goes all the way to WrestleMania. You do this big, giant blow-off match of some sort. And, and then you bring there. out Big E to reunite everybody. I guess you could do everybody that. Everybody goes home happy. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I figured... But who, but who... I don't think anyone really wants to see Kofi Kingston against Woods. You know, it's like... I mean, maybe they can pull it off. But a lot of times... Like, like sometimes when you do this, it works. But you have to have someone who's... It's like the like, brother feuds. They almost never work. Well, no, no. I mean, a brother feud will work if one of the brothers is an asshole. But if neither brother's an asshole and you like both brothers, the last thing you want to see... Like, Dominic and Ray you know, could have totally failed, but because the people really thought Dominic was an asshole, it didn't fail. Um, but yeah, like Ole Anderson and Lars Anderson, even though they were never brothers, like like that was really good because everybody knew Ole was a, such an asshole, he would fight his own brother. But Matt and Jeff Hardy, I mean, they tried and tried and tried, and, you know, the people didn't want to see the match, you know? I mean, they wanted to do the match because they did it when they were kids, but... You know, I remember when they would do the feud and, and, you know, and Matt would be, you know, Matt would do everything he could to be the heel. But at the end of the day, when they, you know, I mean, it's just not a match people really wanted to, they wanted to see him together. They don't want to see him apart. And I think the same goes with the New Day. I think that they're fine with him as the New Day, but they don't want to, I don't think they really want to see him fight each other. Cody Rhodes versus Solo Sikoa or whatever his last name is. 
Paul Paul Newman is watching this match, <laughs> and he's not Excuse on Cody's me? side. <laughs> What's the matter? Absolutely nothing. Everything's no. great. You know, Cody did say that he was looking for a manager. I think him and Paul Newman would be a... <laughs> what a handsome pair. <laughs> yeah. A dashing duo. That guy's a movie star, isn't he? Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.